Hi everyone, Dr. Bruce here. This short topic video is on tissues. Now I realize tissues can be confusing and what I did was uh, put together this infographic that really has all the tissues on one page. Hopefully, I know it looks confusing, but we'll go through it. Hopefully this will help you understand tissues a little bit better and learn about the tissues. So in the middle here are the main categories of tissues. We have epithelium, connective muscle, and nervous tissue. Those are the main categories. And then off to the sides, we have all the subcategories, like the different types of epithelium. So if we begin with uh, epithelium, you'll see epithelium, the sound bite there to describe it, it consists of rows of cells usually covering something. So the, the covering can be either thin or one row of cells, which would be simple, or greater than one row, which would be stratified. So let's take a look at these different uh, cell types. So the sort of the squished cells, the thinnest cells are squamous cells. So you would have simple squamous, that's one row of squamous cells or stratified squamous, which would be like the you know superficial layer of the skin. Another type of cell is the cuboidal. These are a little cube-like cells and again, you can have one row simple cuboidal. These usually uh, line the ducts. And then we have stratified cuboidal, which is a thicker lining for ducts. And then we have columnar, which are more rectangular type shaped cells, like extended columns. Um, so, and we have different types of these. We have simple one row of columnar, stratified more than one row. And then there's an oddball called pseudo stratified, which looks like stratified but it's not because the nuclei don't line up pseudostratified uh, columnar epithelium usually lines well lines the respiratory tract and contains cilia and goblet cells there's also another oddball called transitional this looks a little bit like stratified squamous but in stratified squamous the cells are thicker at the bottom they flatten out at the top but with transitional they're thicker thicker at the bottom and thick at the top and we see transitional epithelium lining the urinary bladder. So that's epithelium. Moving on to connective tissue, which is a pretty big category of tissue. We have the primary connective tissues, which are areolar, dense, adipose, and reticular, and the special connective tissues, which are cartilage, bone, and blood. So if we look at areolar connective tissue, very disorganized tissue, sometimes called fascia, Dense connective tissue is more organized with sort of rows of cells. Dense, connected to, dense connective tissue you will find in ligaments and tendons. Adipose connective tissue has a particular look to it. It has adipocytes, which contain lipid or fat. And reticular connective tissue contains these branching reticular fibers found in the lymphatic system. On the specialized connective tissue side, we have cartilage. So there is hyaline cartilage, uh, which consists of cells called chondrocytes surrounded by a hollow chamber called the lacuna, and that's embedded in a matrix. They say it looks like a ground glass matrix. Elastic tissue also has the chondrocyte in lacuna arrangement, but has the dark elastic fibers. And fibrocartilage, like your fibrocartilaginous discs, which are the discs in you know between the vertebrae and your spine, um, those contain more fibrocartilage than elastic cartilage, more like collagen. We have bone. Bone looks like, you know, there's nothing else that looks like bone. It kind of looks like uh, the inside of a tree at some point. And so we have these uh, units here called haversion systems or osteons. They're organized units that run along the long axis of the bone, which gives it strength. And then we have blood. And blood is actually a connective tissue but it's in a fluid matrix. So it, it, it still contains cells embedded in a matrix, but the matrix is fluid. Moving on to muscle, we have three types of muscle, uh, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Typically, uh, well, the way I like to uh, describe these is uh, they're interconnected long red fibers. So they're red because they contain myoglobin, which is a pigment, and it can be striated or non-striated. The two striated, types of muscle tissue are skeletal and cardiac. And so skeletal consists of these long red cells running along the length of a muscle. And um, they're striated, meaning uh, they have these contractile units called sarcomeres. And between the striations are the sarcomeres. Cardiac muscle is also striated, but it contains a specialized structure called an intercalated disc, 
which helps to conduct electrical impulses. Smooth muscle is non-striated. It's less, it's not as organized as uh, skeletal or cardiac muscle, and it's found in places like the uh, the muscle muscular walls of the arteries, uh, the digestive tract, the alimentary canal, and so on, lining organs primarily. Lastly, we have nervous tissue, and this one is, is pretty easy to identify. It only consists of two things, neurons, which are the cells of the nervous system. So we have the large uh, neuron there, which has, there's a cell body of it, and then supportive cells called glial cells or neuroglia. So these are the little cells, they look like little dots in here, that support the neurons. They do not, uh, you know, conduct electrical impulses. The neurons are the ones that do all the work. All right, so hopefully this helps you with tissues, and um, I'll post this infographic in the announcement section as well, and uh, we'll see you in cyberspace.